everybody, it's Jen from Vine Styles. I hope you're doing well and that you're staying safe. Uh, today I actually lost all of my audio from my clips, but I just wanted to show you all the hard work I did and how excited I am to do this tasting. So let's start. So I just have to do a redo, but that's okay because I really like the wines and I was drinking it off camera anyways. Vlad, you won't believe what Trump just did. Oh my God. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we'll just continue uh, tasting, which is good. And by the way, uh, Vlad is my husband, and I'm not talking about Vladimir Putin, okay? So you guys actually might remember that we did a feature a couple weeks ago, and it was for the Mastionese Rosat. The winery is called Cellar de Capsonés, and they're from Monstrat, Spain. It started with five families back in 1933, and since then it's grown to about i think there's 68 wine growers now uh, they initially started making kosher wines for the jewish community in barcelona and that actually got them onto the international market um, they started exporting a lot of uh, wines to germany and germany is still one of their key exports they're actually one of the biggest reasons why the monstrat region is now a do or a designation of origin. Uh, it actually just circles the outside of Piorat um, in the Catalonia region, and it's surrounded by the Serra di Iberia uh, mountain range. This area is Mediterranean, but because of the mountains, they actually are a little bit more protected, and so they don't have such extreme sort of dry hotness there. They have these really um, dense deposits of different soil types. Uh, the grape is Grenache or Granacha. The wine uh, label is actually called Neat, yeah, La Neat de las Granachas. So one is on a soil called Lecarera, which is predominantly slate, but there tends to be a little bit of quartz in there as well. And then for the limestone, Limestone, um, this one is actually called cal Calicia. Limestone is a little interesting because it can either be very porous and it can retain a lot of water, or if it's a little bit more dense, it actually cracks and it allows the vines to dig really deep and so it really helps kind of establish stronger vine structures. Right, okay, now it's time for my janky map. So we're in the Catalonia region and up here is France, here is the Mediterranean Sea, and then we go over here, and this is actually where the Pure Rat region is. So that tiny little red dot is Pure Rat, and the little brown area that kind of circles it, that's actually Monstrat. And Monstrat is actually the youngest designation of origin in the Catalonia region. Uh, like I said earlier, the winery was a really big part in them uh, receiving their DO, and that was in 2001, so super, super young uh, DO. There's actually comics on these wines, really neat. I love that there's comics on these. I'm not going to actually show them to you or read them to you because I'm gonna keep that as a surprise for you when you get it. Um, no spoilers here. Uh, let's pour. So let's start with the limestone. The slate. So you can kind of tell the the opaqueness or like the consistency and how concentrated a wine is by how um, opaque or watery the rim is. So for the uh, limestone, I actually found that it tends to be a little bit more watery looking than the slate one. The rim, though it's very similar, it tends to reach the top a little bit more and it tends to be a little bit more opaque. The aromatics of it were a little bit more restrained than the slate one. The slate ended up kind of jumping out of the glass a little bit more to me and it still does, so yeah. For the limestone, I get a lot of fresh cherry, a lot of uh, strawberry notes, uh, there's some raspberry as well. Yeah, so good acidity. 
it makes you drool. <laughs> it's light on the tannins. And so it's not very grippy. Actually, when I taste it, uh, the structure of this wine is very similar or reminiscent of almost like a Burgundian Pinot Noir. So in the sense that it's lighter, um, it has a very soft tannin to it. Like there's no grip at the front anyways. It's lighter on the palate and there's a lot of red fruit as well. But it still has a little bit of minerality to it too. Yeah, so this is very easy drinking. I could go out on my patio, I could have it with pork, I could have it with chicken. Super easy to consume. All right, so let's go for the slate now. So on the nose, it's a little bit more aromatic. There's definitely some darker fruit or some riper fruit, um, whereas the limestone had a little bit more fresh or younger fruit. This has a little bit uh, more mature, riper type of fruit. So I'm getting a little bit more of like an apple note to it too. Dark cherry, almost like a, like a dark cherry syrup I would get. Uh, there's some red fruits on there as well, but there's also some plums. I get spice, I get more peppery sort of note and maybe some balsamic. Yeah, I think that's what that, it's kind of a between of like a cherry syrup and a balsamic. It's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. I still like it, so. All right, let's taste. Wow, wow. Great acidity on there too, actually. Yeah, so there's more uh, of a grip on the tannins there, so a little bit more structured. So while the fruit smells riper, um, it's also a little bit riper on the palate. Going into a little bit more of those darker fruits, so a little bit more black plum, black cherry, but I still get a good presence of strawberry and um, uh, raspberry in there. So some red fruits, some black fruits in there. I'm getting more spice as well, which I think is really neat. Uh, a lot more of that cracked uh, black pepper this time for me personally. Uh, typically Grenache tends to have a little bit more white pepper. This one feels more spicy, more black pepper note to it. Uh, also a lot more baking spices too, like vanilla, and maybe it's some like, I don't know if it's a nutmeg or something, but I'm just wondering what that is. There's another spice in there I can't quite get, um, but it's super delicious, much more structured. The limestone, I would probably place it in our elegant section. It's a lot lighter, a lot easier to drink, um, similar to like a Burgundian Pinot Noir, while the uh, slate I would put between almost bold, but no, I would put this into the smooth section because it does have some more tannin on there. It does have some more structure in there. It is a big boy sort of wine. Um, and this would go great with, you could do your like white meats, so your poultry and your pork, but you could also bring this into some red meats as well. So some more beef, some venison type dishes, but awesome like rice dishes, like, honestly, this would go with so many things. It's so food friendly. All right, so that's it. That's the tasting. <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, so just remember that for this Friday feature, uh, the six packs are going to be three of the uh, limestone soils and three of the slate soils. And it's up to you. You get to decide on who is the winner or if you just love them both and you just have them at different times, it's all good. One on the patio, one with dinner, you know, you can choose whatever you want to do. It's all good. Uh, but I was really excited and I am loving this wine and it was just such a cool tasting, guys. Like, I just love this stuff. Well, I hope you guys take care and that you stay safe. Okay, bye! This is why Natalie hates fruit flies. Okay. <laughs>